The strange cloaked mage's voice seemed to echo. I know many things, things that I could teach you. The masked man stepped away from the strange creature towards the lost planeswalker, and in exchange, I believe there are things that you could do for me. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Simon, bringing you another tabletop tale. Today, I, being a professor in the Lorehold College in the prestigious Strixhaven School of Mages, would like to present to you the continued story of Strixhaven. In our last session, we learned how fellow students and planeswalkers Will and Rowan and Kenrith found their way to Strixhaven on invitation by the Enigma Sage Kazmina. The two may be splitting further apart, driven by different goals, but a greater threat looms over the school than a simple sibling rivalry, one Kazmina may already be aware of. Now, settle down students, this story will have some shocking revelations as a new character has stumbled into the brewing conflict and could stand at its epicenter. Be sure to stay after class on this one everybody because there's a lot of postscript needed to explain how Luca gets from Ikoria to Strixhaven. On a beach, along a scenic campus courtyard, Kazmina watched her owl returning from the dormitories. She could still see the twins in her mind, their images a bit warped from the shape of those avian eyes. Strixhaven would offer many possibilities for them both, she just needed to see which ones they would take. Something then pulled at her attention and Kazmina closed her eyes, but instead of darkness, her mind filled with red. Another of her owls flew through the air, soaring over a rocky desert. Movement below snagged her gaze. A man climbed the rocks, the reds and browns of his clothing helping him to blend into the landscape. Beside him, a fox-like creature leapt nimbly up the side of the formation, only to suddenly stop and drop into a defensive stance. There was a rush of hot air as several figures seemed to slide from the shadows, stepping out of the surrounding mesa at impossible angles. They were dressed in dark clothing, metal masks hovering where their faces should be. A sickly purple light coalesced in each of their raised hands, all of which were pointed at this man with this fox thing. Slowly he raised his hands and surrender. Kazmina sent out a mental command and her owl followed high overhead as the mages bound the man's arms and legs and dragged him towards a yawning cave mouth waiting ahead. Luca grunted as the mages shoved him into the cave. Mila prowled at his side, her teeth bared and hackles raised. Silently, he reached out through their link to soothe her. If she attacked, the mages would think that he was an enemy, and while he was sure he'd win the fight, that wasn't what he had come here for. Mila looked at him, then slowly settled back into wariness. She kept in step with Luca, stepping over aged molded books that spilled over from bare stacks along the wall. The mages brought him into a larger chamber, stalagmites and stalactites cut through the space like jagged teeth. The ceiling bathed in shadows. Luca stumbled on loose stones, sending a small shower of pebbles skittering down the slope behind him. Quiet, one of the masked mages hissed at him. He shoved at Luca's shoulders. Keep moving. Luca took a breath, trying to smother his own annoyance. Then one of the stalagmites moved. At first, he thought he was imagining things, the darkness playing tricks on his mind. Then Luca extended his senses and froze. The pebbly, ridged texture was in stone, but some kind of shell. Slowly, whatever it was seemed to unfold, stretching long and spindly legs into darkness. Behind him, another stalactite shifted in place, making a low chittering sound as it did. They were surrounded. Keep moving, said the masked mage. They picked their way through the space, every skittering stone sending their gazes up to the ceiling. Luca tried to envision what these creatures looked like when they were active. The thought of facing one of them in the flesh brought back memories of the many crawling nightmares that lurked in the cave systems under Ikoria. Accompanying the horror, though, was an odd familiarity. He couldn't help but feel as though he had encountered this kind before. The mages yanked Luca to a stop, forcing him to his knees. Mila turned towards the far side of the cavern, dropping low into a snarl. Luca glanced down at her. Hey, quiet. The crunching of bones punched through the silence. Footsteps approached, and out of the shadows came a tall, thin figure. Swirling around the long, almost bird-like mask hiding his face were currents of dark, coalescing energy. Luca tried to keep his own expression neutral as the man approached one of the creatures hanging from the ceiling pausing to caress its shell. Welcome to Arcavios, Luca of Ikoria. You know me? I know many things. Things that I could teach you. The masked man stepped away from the strange creature towards Luca. 
and in exchange, I believe there are things that you could do for me. Alright guys, so loads to unpack from today's lesson, and good thing it was a short one because we need to dive a little bit more into this one. So, I'm sure you all have many questions about Luca and their involvement here, so let's start with the basics. Who is he, and what could have caused him to jump into this environment? Luca is a truly conflicted character from the plane of Ikoria, and that's where we learn a lot about his story. Ikoria is a land ruled by monsters, terrifying beasts that have pushed humanity and its civilizations to the brink on more than one occasion. As such, most of the people living on Ikoria despise the monsters who have come to mean nothing but death to them. But even so, some of the populace are born with a unique ability to bond with these monsters magically, to understand them and even form a friendship. These bonders are seen as sympathizing with the enemy and are shunned by normal human society and are for the most part considered traitors. Luca Onikoria was a high-ranking general in defense of its strongest city, Draneth, and he too shared a disdain for monsters and those who bonded with them. That is, until he discovered himself to be such a bonder. Though he could befriend these beasts, his hatred for their endless slaughter of humans wouldn't be so easily squashed. So, he tried to hide his ability, but it really didn't succeed. Once he too was branded a traitor, Luca ran into the planeswalker Vivian Reed, who was investigating why monsters on Ikoria were becoming more easily enraged and prone to attacking humans. It was a magic she traced that was unnatural to the plane, and not purely the monster's normal behavior. Together they went out to find out why and to save Ikoria. In Luca's case, his idea was to save humanity, and in Vivian's case, she was driven to save the monsters. Together they discovered an object known as the Ozolith, a structure coursing with the magic of an unknown planeswalker. The same magic enraging the monsters of Ikoria. Luca had shown an uncanny ability to counteract this rage magic in calming down his bonded beasts, so he attempted to deactivate this Ozolith. As the voice of this planeswalker creator plagued Luca's mind, he coursed with power that warped his thoughts, making him very unbalanced. Luca took on this amazing power of the Ozolith and was able to control vast numbers of beasts at the same time. Essentially, he could form his own army. However, his mind was so rattled by the experience that he no longer understood his own goals. Though bonded with many monsters, Luca believed that he could form a monster army and use them to kill other monsters and their bonded human companions in a weird, hypocritical fever dream. All Luca knew was that his city, Draneth, was about to be under siege by enraged monsters, and to him, all monsters were foes, and those bonded to him were simply just another weapon to be used in this war. He took his plan back to Draneth, who had exiled him, presenting it to the High General Kudro, who also happened to be the father of his beloved. Kudro is even more disdainful of monsters than Luca was, and refused his proposal. Enraged, Luca killed Kudro, believing his plan was the best chance for the city to survive. Shocking only Luca, his love rebuked him after he killed her father, and he was left alone and scared. He took his monster army on the offense, again counterintuitively believing that attacking his own city with his monsters was the best course to save his city from monsters. Draneth, now run by Luca's former love interest, Jarena, successfully defended the city from all the monster threats by finally utilizing the natural bonders found in their population along with their monster companions. They were able to beat back Luca and his army, and he's sort of a bad loser, so he goes back to the Ozolith seeking more power, enough to control the entire monster population on Ikoria if need be. Again, that mysterious planeswalker's voice echoed in Luca's head, warning him of consequences of seeking this much power. He channeled this energy anyway, but the Ozolith exploded. With so much power being expunged from him at once, it was traumatic to ignite Luca's latent planeswalker spark, sending him crashing into a swampy foreign world, where Luca found that his powers greatly were reduced, but he was still able to bond with at least a single beast at a time. That's where we last saw Luca, a deranged man lost without understanding his own actions and never coming to terms with the duality of his natural gifts and the society that had implanted in him the ideas that those gifts were evil. Right now, Luca is a man struggling. His whole life, he's been taught that monsters are bad, bonders were disgusting, but he's one of them. And even using that gift in defense of humans to hurt monsters wasn't enough for him to regain his spot in his society. 
Jumping from plane to plane, Luca now finds himself here in the middle of a conflict coming for the school of Strixhaven, and it looks to be that he chose to be here. He understood something that this mysterious mage person was offering and sought him out. For a mind as tormented as Luca's, I have no doubt that he can be manipulated for a dangerous cause. Now in the domain of the Auric, there is no telling what he and his powers could be used for. Now we seemingly have more questions than answers. This mysterious leader of the Auric may know about Planeswalkers, apparently have watched over Luca for some time, even pulling them into Arcarvios just to have this encounter. Does this mean the leader of the Orc is a Planeswalker? Maybe the same Planeswalker who even created the Ozolith Oni Coria that ultimately led to Luca's corruption? It would make a lot of sense, it would explain how the two may be connected, but connected how and to what ends, that's all still left a mystery. Anyway, everyone, class is out of time for today. As a pop quiz, please let me know in the comments what you think of the stories thus far. For some extra credit, be sure to leave this video a like, subscribe, and tick that notification bell. Want to be a teacher's pet? Make sure to check out the Patreon linked in the description below. And as always, students, thank you all so much for attending Lorehold College, and until next time, class dismissed.